today on The Garage Fathers, we're gonna to explain to you why it's been so long since we've posted a new video. Everything that we've gone through since you last saw us, and what happened to his face. Yeah, my poor beard, rest in peace. Guess what guys, we've also got a really cool surprise for you. So stay tuned. Welcome back, everybody. I don't know if you've heard or not, but evidently there's some sort of a virus that's been going and spreading around the country. And um, the Garage Fathers caught it. And like with everything, you know, too long Tommy here, he caught it first. He gets to do everything first. Except for drive. Well, yeah, I got drive first. <laughs> yeah, so I got it and I was down for like eight days and it was pretty brutal, but I was able to fight it at home, stayed out of the hospital, so that was good. Even though I don't like to be second, I got it next. And um, both my wife and I were hospitalized in separate hospitals. The kids were home, running amok. But through modern medical mechanical advancements and the power of forced air induction, a couple of pounds of boost, and they got me feeling loose again. You know what I mean? And then uh, now Tommy and I both were getting back to feeling Medi like our our naturally aspirated selves. Yeah but we almost ended up in one of these. But anyways, we're back now. That's what happened to my beard. Uh, we shaved it. My wife's really bummed about it. She liked it. We're gonna give it a funeral, maybe take it for a ride in the hearse and stuff. But um, we really missed you guys. We love doing these videos for you and entertaining you guys. And that's what we're back here to do. And we're excited today because we're gonna do the first of a new series we're gonna do where we're gonna actually do some how-to videos. So uh, we're new at this and we're gonna try and make sure that we do it, with, of course, with our typical Garage Fathers flair, right? Of course. Yeah, but let us know in the comments what you think about our how-to series, okay? Tom, you wanna tell them about the surprise? Yeah, so we are putting a four-speed into the Garage Father Barn Find Camaro RSSS. And we are gonna bring you guys along for that ride. So come on, let's go put a four-speed in a Camaro. Today we're gonna do a four-speed conversion on this little Camaro here, and it's gonna be pretty fun. So I wanted to show you guys what's involved in that. It's really very simple with the uh, early GM cars. If you have a Turbo 350 or a Power Glide, and you wanna go to a four-speed transmission, then you get to keep your cross member, you get to keep your same drive line, it's a breeze. So this conversion really is very easy. The hardest part is probably gonna be hooking up the Z bar for the uh, clutch linkage, but it's no sweat. So I wanted you guys to see it. So I've started disassembly. Um, everybody can disassemble, right? So I didn't think I needed to labor the showing of that to you guys, but I'll tell you what I've done. I had to take out the drive line, that's first. Disconnect exhaust. I removed the cross member for the uh, transmission, which is four bolts to the frame and two to the transmission, super easy. Then I removed my distributor cap so that I could lower the engine a little bit in the back. And uh, then I took the tranny out. Transmission is six bell housing bolts, three torque converter bolts, uh, the previously, previously mentioned two cross member bolts. And then you have what, speedo cable, and a vacuum um, tube to take loose on there. So that's all done. And then here's where I'm gonna pick up with you guys. I'm gonna show you what I've done and then I'm gonna show you steps for the reassembly as we move forward. So I hope you enjoy it. Let's go to work.
All right, let me show you guys what we're looking at under the dash here. So you have this assembly. Um, this is your brake push rod here for the uh, master cylinder. And then this goes through the bracket up under the dash. Some people take out the bracket. That's a lot more work to me, although this was not easy to get out. This little pin was really tough on this guy. But um, let me show you, you just take these clamps off. You just raise, and slide out. It's easy, hard to get to, easy to do. Okay, and then you can slide this pin out here. That allows the pedal to fall, but before you can remove it, you do have to take this loose. It cannot come out with the pedal. So with the clip out, slide it out. Now it was a, a bear man under there. It's easier now because it's been apart, but that guy out of there. Head rusted to the uh, this bush rod. Um, so anyway, let me show you how easy it is to put a clutch assembly pedal set up into a Camaro. So with the brake only automatic situation, you have a pin that goes in here. Well, with the uh, brake and clutch assembly, the clutch pedal is the pin. And so all I'm going to do is reverse procedure. We're going to take and put this under there. The clutch will be the pin that goes through. I'm not going to say it's easy to do, but it's not that complicated. It's just hard to reach. And I mean, this is pretty stiff being that I restored it. So it's going to be a little tough to get together, but we'll get it. And then this will just go right here and it'll be in exactly the same place as it was on the automatic. So super easy. I'll go put it in and then I will show you guys uh, once we have a four speed assembly. Let me show you guys one more thing that needs to come out. That is a really good design on Chevy's part. If you guys can see it, there's a little block off plate right down there that has two machine screws that hold it on. That is the place where the rod, the clutch rod, will come through the firewall and hit the uh, Z-bar. So we need to get that off, so I'm going to take that off. I want to make sure I have good clearance before I finish putting the pedals in. Okay guys, getting ready to put the uh, bracket on the frame that will hold one end of the Z-bar. This particular frame was already drilled, and so all that I needed to do was tap it. Some applications will not be drilled but they should be indented or punched so that you know the correct location for the bolts. This will take a 5 16 fender style bolt. Let me show you guys what we've done here. See if you can get a good look at, there's the uh, little pivot ball for the Z bar that's been installed. Okay, and then I'll bring you over here and show you the pedal assembly is now in place and working well. The Z-bar has been installed. It was slipped over the ball pinion on the motor side that you can see there. And then over here, you can see that it has slid down in the groove of the bracket we put on the frame. So now we have a working Z-bar. Over here, guys, is the clutch rod that will run from the pedal to the uh, Z-bar. Notice there's a new uh, insulative boot that I put on there first. Have uh, washers and cotter pins, so that will go on next, and I'll show you as soon as that is on. All right, the basics. When you guys get a flywheel, whether it's used or whether, like in my case, it's new, you want to surface this flywheel so that your surface is true and that way you won't have any clutch chatter. All right, so we're going to put this in the car. Let's go. Okay, so one of the things that's most important about putting the flywheel on is making sure that both surfaces are perfectly clean. So you want to file any burrs off of both the crank surface as well as the flywheel. 
and you want to make sure that there's no grease or anything on there that's going to uh, cause a problem. Hey, Muncie, can I make a couple of wrenches, please? Yeah, no problem. So you want to make sure everything's off, and that will pre prevent you from getting a clutch check when you're done. So both surfaces must be totally true. So I'm going to file these. Let's, let's file. All right. Hey, Tommy, I got some wrenches for you. Awesome. I wasn't sure what size you need. No problem. Let me get you some sockets too. Paybacks? This is gonna suck. Better. Now that we have both surfaces completely clean, we are going to put the flywheel up here into place. Just like that. There is an alignment hole that you have to make sure uh, is lined up. Doesn't take a bolt. It's you line hole up with hole. Okay, and then I have my bolts ready. I'm gonna just put these in with a little bit of Loctite. Now we're going to torque them to factory spec. So my torque spec that I'm going with is 65 foot-pounds. And so I'm gonna do this in two steps and start out with 30. I may have to lock that. Now we're going to get up to 65. I'm going to put a screwdriver through this hole to help keep the uh, flywheel from turning on me. And I go this last step. Ah, okay. 65 pounds all the way around. Time for pressure plate and clutch disc. One thing I didn't mention that's important is first thing you're gonna knock this little pilot bearing into the crankshaft and it goes pretty easy. You just gotta make sure that you tap it in straight. Don't let it get sideways on you. And you want to put just a little bit of grease in that pilot bearing for the front of the transmission shaft. So we are now going to put the uh, pressure plate and clutch disc up. And so that is awkward under here, but not impossible. My little arms can hold that up long enough to get a bolt in here. These bolts will take some Lock tight, but just to get it in place to where it's not going to fall on me, I'll get a couple of bolts started. Oops. Okay. Nope. Almost. Okay. Satisfied with that. Now, ninja move. There's a lot of clutch alignment tools. Nothing works better than the front shaft of a transmission. I'm telling you guys, if you can get one, it's really a cool way to go. Okay. I now have all these bolts run up finger tight and the clutch is aligned just right, but now we have to tighten these. And we're gonna tighten these a little bit at a time so that the spring in the pressure plate tightens down sort of equally all the way around at the same time. 
Okay, so where we are is we have all of our pressure plate bolts run up snug with a ratchet and our front shaft and the uh, transmission still perfectly aligned, nice and smooth. So I'm gonna now torque these to 35 pounds is what I've chosen. You may want to look for your own torque specs. Don't rely on me for that, but that's what I found and that's what I'm gonna use. I do this always in two steps. So we are going to torque to 20 right now. Probably not necessary, but I think it's better. Our second step, and that is 35 foot pounds. I'm gonna go around in a circle on this last torsion. Done. All right, it's time to think about our bell housing now, and I'll show you the uh, clutch fork as well. Here is the bell housing. This clutch fork right here is another Napa Special. That was something that I purchased brand new, as well as this boot, and that was part of the uh, $400 that I mentioned before. So let's get this under the car and on. Let's get the bell housing in place. There are a couple of studs that we want to go over here. And that side. Okay. That side, there we are. Notice that the uh, throughout bearing is already in place. Run a couple of bolts up in here and then tighten them all up. I generally don't torque these. That's my choice. I think some people torque them to specs. I don't. I just get them nice and tight. Bell housing is in place, finger tight. So I'm going to tighten these up. One thing that works great is these little swivels. If you guys haven't used them before. So this is true of automatic transmissions too. So for these top bolts, I'm going to use a swivel and get them nice and snug. Now, I am not gonna torque these. I am going to just get them nice and tight. Okay, bell housing's in. We are ready for the transmission. So uh, we're gonna grab that. One thing, the Garage Fathers do not have a lift yet, so we have to suffer working on the ground like many of you guys do. And so I've created my own little transmission cradle that I actually like better than a transmission jack. So let's get to work. I'll show you guys that. Okay, one of the most important things as you are getting ready to stab the transmission is to make sure that you don't knock your throw up bearing out of its place. And so we are going slow and easy as we thread the needle through the throw up bearing. Once we reach the clutch disc, however, then uh, you have some stability there because the pressure plate now has the clutch disc nice and tight. And so we are just moving slow, getting the tranny up into um, the throwout bearing now. And nice and slow. Maybe a little bit more height here. There we go. We are in the clutch disc now, I believe. So the transmission is in. 
you got to see a little of that, but it is really hard to film under here with tight um, spaces. But anyway, I will tell you, angle is everything. So sometimes it feels like the transmission isn't going to slip in. Well, it will. Angle is everything. As long as you've used your alignment tool and when you're putting in your clutch disc and your pressure plate and you have a, a nice amount of slide um, when that's in, then you're golden. Transmission will go in for sure. Angle is everything. Okay, so we are going to tighten this up and then we'll be almost done. Cross member, drive line, few odds and ends. The transmission is now bolted up tight to the bell housing. It's time to put the cross member in. This car is a challenge when it comes to putting in the cross member because the subframe bushings to the body are all worn out. That makes the frame closer to the body and that makes it really hard to get the uh, cross member in and out. But some of you guys are gonna have that same problem. So I'm gonna show you how I deal with that. By the way, lucky me, subframe bushings come today, later. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna go ahead and do this and I'm gonna show you how. So we're getting ready to put in a cross member in a car that has very little space to do so. So you need a mountain mover. And in this case, it's kind of a semi mountain mover. And here's our cross member. Um, in terms of putting it in, you can see those three holes over here. This is the factory spot for a factory four speed. So you know that goes on the driver's side. Okay. And so what I've done is taken a bolt out here on the uh, subframe. I'm going to pry this down so that I have enough room to get the cross member in. And it's a little bit of a challenge, but we're going to get it. Okay, so I need to get this guy up over the exhaust, like such. These three holes again on the driver's side. I'm going to put one side up here. Okay. And then, with any luck, I'm going to pry this down enough to get this cross member up in place. There we go. Just like that. So there we are. Cross member in place. Looked easy, right? But you guys didn't feel all the muscles pulling that I did. All right, let's run some bolts up into this. You want to keep everything loose initially. Get all the bolts started. By the way, we'll put our subframe bolt back in. Even though this thing doesn't go anywhere, I always feel a lot safer when it's in. I don't like having a subframe bolt out with weight on the car. Bolts are in loose. It's time to lower the weight of the engine and transmission down on this, and then I'll tighten them up. So I need another four feet underneath this car to be able to really show you good what's been done. But you can see this is transmission bolted up to the bell housing, nice and tight now. There's our cross member that's been bolted up. The next thing we have to do is if you're doing a conversion, you have to reroute your um, speedo cable over to the passenger side. So let's get the speedometer cable down. Make sure we're not hooked up on something. So I've crossed over. It was on the driver's side. Now it will be on the passenger side. Okay. 
we have the little clutch rod here that we are going to install. And you know about where I want to be. So let's take it to the car and put it in. We are going to put this clutch rod right up in here. One side goes to the clutch fork, the other side to the uh, clutch linkage, the Z bar, which is already of course in place. This is also your clutch adjustment. And I know about where I wanna be to start out, but I will probably need to come back under here and adjust this. So this is what adjusts your pedal, how far out it's gonna be when it starts to engage the clutch. Um, I generally go for about halfway down. Everybody's different and you can adjust it to your liking. Clutch spring. I'm just gonna hook this on here. And then see if I can get this to hook over on the far side. See what happens. Just like that. There it is on the motor mount side. And here it is over here on the clutch fork side. Okay, drive line is going in and what a challenge in a tight position, but we got this. I'm going to slide the yoke in there and then get this back in place. Drive line is now in, so we will move to one of our last steps, which is this convertible only little plate here. It's a structure plate that helps keep convertibles rigid. That's in. Now we just have to do the bell housing inspection cover and shifter and we are done. Going to put on this inspection cover and for me, I'm only using the bottom two bolts. It'll be fine, it clips at the top. Uh, one of my bolts, bolt holes is missing, but this'll be fine. It's not gonna rattle around once we Get it tight. Where is it? There it is. All right, just shifter, and then we can try it out. A trick that I learned a long time ago with console cars is you can use a Hurst rubber boot, turn it upside down, and just shove it down through the floor. So we're gonna put that on here. They're a little tough to get into place, but once they're in place, they work great. Keep all the noise from the road out.
There, how about that? Okay, the Camaro four-speed project is done. It's time for a test drive now, so we're gonna get in, make sure that it works, all right? Hey, oh, Tommy, are we about done here? Yeah, we are about done. <laughs> <laughs> um, in my defense, I don't really fit well under the car. <laughs> yeah, that's true. All right. Hey, uh, while you were doing this, I got to thinking, we just enhanced the value of this thing, I think, by what, maybe $5,000? Yeah, probably. So I increased our coverage from twenty five dollars to $30,000 on the agreed value of our classic car insurance nice. policy. good call, dude. Dude, it was just a little over a dollar a month. <laughs> now, you guys should think about doing that, too, when you do projects that enhance the value of your cars at home as well. Yeah. Time for a drive? Yeah, absolutely. All and right. hey, you guys, get ready. Within a few weeks, we're gonna do a feature on this car as it stands now in the showroom. So get ready for that. That's right. right. Dude, you wanna catch the door? Since you did the hard work, hey. I'll let you drive. I'll get the door. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna drive. <laughs> you guys remember, payback's gonna